In this video, I'm going to talk about how to get traction to recognize your effects plugins. This also works for instrument plugins, but we need to do this in order to get ready to use effects on our track. So I'm going to go to the settings tab and then to the plugins page. And you can see there's a big list here of plugins because I've already done this scan. But I just want to explain how this works. You go down to scanning and sorting and you can scan for audio units plugins, VST or VST3. Now, obviously, audio units plugins are only for Mac, so if you're on a PC, you won't see that particular option. You can also remove any plugin whose files no longer exist, which is certainly not a bad idea. But if you wanted to start from scratch or your machine is new and you've never done this, you can just clear this list. So you go to scanning and sorting. I'm going to start with my audio units plugins and just click scan for new or updated audio units plugins. And it will go through this scanning process and it will just scan every single plugin that you've got installed of that kind. Now this might take several minutes or it might take just a few seconds depending on how many plugins you've got. And after this finishes scanning, I'll come back and we'll go on and do the VST plugins. Now my audio unit scan is completed and all my audio units effects are here. Now if any of them didn't actually load correctly into Traction, then you'll see messages like this saying they were deactivated because they didn't initialize. And that would indicate that these are not compatible in some way with Traction. You can either report that back to Traction software or you can make sure that you've got the latest version of those effects plugins installed. Now also keep in mind that this is a 64-bit version of Traction. I'm only going to be able to run the 64-bit plugins. If you have 32-bit plugins, then you'd need to run the 32-bit version of Traction. I'm going to continue and scan for new or updated VST plugins. And that went pretty quick. I don't have as many VST plugins. And then we can also complete this by scanning for the VST3 plugins. All right, so that's finished. So all of my plugins are here. Once your plugins are all loaded, they by default will come up in this list and they'll show in alphabetical order. If you want to see them by manufacturer, you can click right here and now you can see they're nicely organized by manufacturer. You could also do them by category, which is the kind of thing they are, either effect or synth for the most part. Or you can organize them by format, like audio unit and VST. Now, since Traction 5 is a nice browser to use to search for plugins, I usually use that. But there's also a plugin object that you can grab, and it has a pop-up menu or a pop-up tree. So I'm going to show you the difference between those. So here's the pop-up menu. If you go in here and we drag a plugin in, we use this. This is the plugin object. Drag it here to create it. And here is the menu style. So then you choose from here, pick a plugin, and add it to the mixer section. Now if we change this to a tree, then it looks different over here when you drag this in. I'm going to delete this and drag this in, then this is what the tree looks like. So here it's organized by traction plugins. It's really the same thing, just a different view of it. Not really my favorite way to look at it, but it does allow you to close these up, organize it in different ways. So you also have over here the ability to change the sort order. I'll leave it in tree for a minute. It's sorted by manufacturer, but we can also sort by category or disk location. Let's take a look at what happens when we do category sort with the tree version. So we'll drop this here. So here's the category sort. We've got rack filters. We've got effects. For the most part, I typically am going to leave this by manufacturer. Disk location is another option. Let's just take a look at that. And disk location looks like this. This is going to be more organized by if it's VST, VST3, or audio units in this particular case. But if you want to use the kind of normal traction way, you'd leave this set to pop-up menu, set this sorted by manufacturer. Now opening the plugin windows, a single click on a plugin opens its GUI window. Now I always leave this to single click, and you can see here the plugin windows are unpinned by default. So I'm going to show you what that means. Now the single click means once you've got one of these in here, you click it once 
and then the UI pops open like this. And if you have it set to double click, you double click it to pop open the UI. The other thing is you have the option to pin these down. Let me put another one in here so you can see what pinning does. We'll just choose, we'll put in an equalizer. With pinning off, when you click another plugin, it closes the first one. But if you pin the plugin and then open a second one, the first one will stay. So now I can flip back and forth between these two plugins and the other one won't go away. As soon as you unpin it and then click on another one, then the UI basically gets hidden. So that's what pinning is all about. And you can decide if you just want these pinned so you, auto, you have to close them manually every time, then you can say the plugin windows are pinned by default. And sometimes that's a convenient way to use this. Uh, right now I'm leaving this set to unpinned by default. Now it's also important to keep traction and your plugins up to date to make everything work better. The Traction developers are constantly working to make Traction compatible with all modern plugins, but sometimes plugin manufacturers also are making changes. So it will work better if you check to make sure that all of these things are up to date. Now that we've got all our plugins scanned and recognized by Traction, we're going to take a closer look at how to use plugins starting in the next video. Thanks for watching.